In Mark 7, 9, Jesus said, Full well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your own tradition. A little while ago, I did a short video on tradition, where tradition comes in and interferes with keeping God's commandments. And I think I'm finally getting a handle on this, that is in the practical way that we are facing it every day. Now that is my wife and I here in Botswana, in Africa, as we look at things. I hope that this can be useful to you. Because one of the things that is going on that we see is there's a tremendous respect for tradition, for culture, for this or that. Now we were coming over here on God's direction. And obviously we are strangers coming into a strange land. What does that mean for us? Christian organizations would say, oh, you, you know, you learn the traditions, you learn the culture, you learn what makes them tick. Really what they're saying is you want to learn how to get along with your host, which isn't such a bad idea. Don't get me wrong. But I'm seeing that this goes way, way, way too far. Because one of the things that I had seen even from the beginning, and this is from scripture, and that is tradition can be used to trump the word of God. And people will reject the word of God to keep their tradition. And of course, many of you say, well, you know, I don't, I don't do that. Well, many people don't do that. I think I had alluded to the fact that, I mean, Christmas is one of those kind of traditions that has been kept, but it violates the word of God and it goes against it. Although most people don't know the truth, unfortunately, many Christian leaders do and they never divulge it. And they really, <laughs> they really should be trying to lead their people into holiness. Nonetheless, I'm not here to talk about that. So we have come into Africa and people are saying, oh, you know, learn the culture, learn the tradition, learn this and that. And we see there's, there's, there's not a real problem with that in, in what is just, let's say, a, a, an innocent tradition, something that doesn't go one way or the other. Now, if you're going to read this in scripture, where Jesus talks about rejecting the commandment of God for tradition, and I have the scriptures listed in my description at the bottom here. You read that, he will tell you, you know, what they were doing, what specifically they were violating in keeping their tradition. They had made up a new tradition. And so by seeing that Jesus said this, I always felt within myself, well, you know, tradition is fine, but it falls short. If we're talking about traditions of food, what kind of food, the way people eat. We were in Tanzania, people ate mostly with their fingers. Now, there's nothing wrong with eating your, with your fingers. I didn't uh, adapt to it fully, but I didn't mind it. It was okay. Uh, it could be a way of dress. Sometimes there are wedding traditions, there are funeral traditions. There are different things like that. Or even say at, at uh, the church I attend, men and women, sit on opposite, they sit all men and all women on opposite sides. If they want to do that, that's okay. Things like that are kind of neutral. They're not one side or another. But we have to be careful when we're getting into vaunting tradition above the word of God. So you see what happens and what I'm seeing here, unfortunately, is I'm seeing that the word of God is being twisted in the name of tradition, or it's more or less being said, well, this is the way we do things. And I'm a little bit shocked, uh, certainly hurt. Uh, when I, so when I came here and I'm looking at this tradition thing, understand me, I'm, look, I'm looking at it and I, I'm being courteous, you know, and I'm trying to look with the mind of Christ. And I'm saying, you know, what is? So I come into churches I come into churches that are supposed to be Christian. And guess what? This is what we follow. The Bible. Black or white. Africa, America, Europe, Asia. We follow the Bible. Right? That's what we're supposed to do. But what we're finding here is I have found on multiple occasions when I'm trying to present the word and the Lord has truly chosen me uh, in the area of laboring in the word of God and, and doctrine. He has given me a lot of time and stuff to do this. And, and, and no, I, I, I don't know everything. I'd need probably 10 times as long to come close. And even then, I'm sure my wisdom would be confounded. 
But the point is simply this. When I come in, I say, okay, so I know the word. And I'm saying, this is what the word says. And what I hear is, that's not the way we do it. But you see, they're not saying it because the word said something else. It's just not the way they want to do it. And that's not legitimate. See, here is a difference. A person might say, okay, well, we have a lot of denominations and they believe different things. This is true to a point. For example, we might use the, uh, we might use the issue of eternal security. Some might believe that once they are truly saved, they have repented and trusted in Jesus, that now they have, you know, they are set with him for all eternity. No matter what happens, they cannot fall away from him or anything else. They will go to heaven. And then some believe, more like I do, and that is that even after we are saved, you know, Satan can try to, can deceive us. I mean, the scripture, I mean, the scripture says there's a falling away. I don't even want to argue about that. But the point is, both of those views are found from Scripture. The people are looking at Scripture and they're interpreting it and saying, well, we think it's this. And the other says, we think it's that. It's never, well, we, don't just, we just don't do it that way. You see, that is where you're putting... It's not strictly tradition. Now, of course, I've just had an experience like this, which is why I'm sharing, but it's not just one experience. I'm seeing this. And that is... The people that we are sharing with, testifying, you know, the, the, the native Africans. Okay, sometimes we come to a point with them and they're just like, well, that's you. That's not me. Even though I'm pointing out the scripture, they're saying that's for you in the West. It's not for us here in Africa. And brothers and sisters, you know, this cannot be. I mean, it's simply, simply put, it cannot be. Because the Bible is universal for all. And so I just want to caution you to take a look at things because what I think has happened is over time that the, the organized church has gone so far into courteously learning cultures and traditions, they've really shown a respect of persons. But what happens is the Bible says we are to go into the world and preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized is saved. He that believes not is damned. It says that we have to repent and get remission of sins through Jesus Christ. You see, the common tradition to all men is that we are sinners and separated from God. But I think the impression that is being given many times is that God accepts you the way you are, which unfortunately includes their sinful behavior or sinful things they do, so that they never look to the Bible as a dogmatic a manual for for their lives. Instead, they are just they just say they can take it or leave it. Uh, I've had this happen now several times, and I think I'm finally understanding it. And it's it's shocking. In some ways, not unexpected, I suppose, for this time of history. But we need to learn to discern. You know what is our mission? Our mission is to preach the gospel. Everyone is lost. And they need reconciliation to God. That's what it is. And their traditions are not valid in God's eyes by themselves. I mean, they may be neutral. I mean, does it, does it matter if you wear a bright colored shirt to a, to a wedding or something like that? No, that's okay. You know, but when you start compromising real faith, wait, so this doesn't apply to me because I just don't want to do it. You've gone too far. And so I urge you simply to look at the issue of tradition. Please check out some of these scriptures. I didn't go a long time into uh, listing a lot of scriptures because I think it's obvious. You know, Jesus Christ came to save sinners of whom I am chief. That is what we have to come to and then, and then repent or, you know, we will be in the lake of fire in the end. Because God does not accept sinners he accepts the repentance of the sinner. We must turn from our sins and trust Jesus alone for our salvation. May God, add, may God bless this message to your understanding and use.